Welcome to the Eduonics Amazon course, Amazon Web Services or AWS. In this first segment, we will present an overview to Amazon Web Services. This is a document with the title AWS Overview, and you can find this document in the documentation folder for this topic. Let's just take a moment to go through an overview the Amazon Web Services. Firstly, AWS is a cloud computing platform. That is, it's an infrastructure provider that provides what are commonly known as cloud services. And there is a commonly used schema for those services. That schema is as follows, IaaS or Infrastructure as a Service, PaaS or PaaS, Platform as a Service, SaaS, Software as a Service. So this schema can be expanded. Cloud computing is a solution when you need to be able to scale your infrastructure services. Imagine you are an IT related service and a client comes in with a big new contract and you need to quickly expand your infrastructure for IT. The cloud provides a solution for this. The schematic representation of that is scalable and elastic. This means we can scale up our infrastructure to meet our current needs. As we have more clients or our clients' needs change, we can scale our services to meet those needs. We can also be elastic in the way we use our infrastructure. That is, we can scale down. The elastic means we can scale up and scale down quickly to meet our needs and our clients' needs. Amazon have always been a pioneer in this type of cloud service. Let's describe some example applications. So firstly, a very good application is classroom training and research. By spinning up virtual machines in the cloud, students can be taken through various scenarios and simulation to learn industry or other related skills. Another common application is clustering and analytics. We see now the emergence of a new IT professional known as a data scientist, and they use a definition of clustering that's different to what we would describe as a system admin's definition of clustering. So you can think of a clustering as being a cluster of computers or a computer cluster. But clustering can also relate to a MapReduce function with data. Clustering can relate to MapReduce, Hadoop, and a way a data scientist aggregates information for an analytical process. Where clustering is a vocabulary term that can also relate to computer clusters, which is the basis of the cloud. Then we have web applications. By creating an EC2 virtual machine in the cloud, we can host a web server and related services for that web server, such as databases. So we can create web application in a virtual machine in AWS. We can have other related AWS services that relate to web applications, such as the domain name service or the simple messaging service for a push-pull server. Then, when we're talking about web applications and media streaming, we have a content delivery service. A common one used on Amazon is CloudFront. We use content delivery services to provide content via edge services so we can locate our content closer to our users and time zones. And we have the idea of push pull web sockets. We have the idea of a database or a data store. Amazon have a number of offerings from relational to NoSQL. Then we have the idea of bulk storage, just an internet backup service if you like. In our modules that will follow on from this overview, we will go through some strategic services that would be used in some of these example applications. For the AWS cloud computing platform, these are the services that we will examine in detail. So we have a schema, we have a service, we have the domain that that service resides in. For a compute service, we have the Elastic Cloud Compute, known as EC2. Here is a link to the Elastic Cloud Compute. You can think of the EC2 service as being the virtualization service in the first instance, because it is where we create virtual boxes or virtual machines. It has a simple web service interface, which allows you to obtain complete control of your computing resources. We will go through a full example of installing and configuring an application in a virtual machine spun up and configured on EC2. Amazon's EC2 virtual machines come in a number of different forms. Possibly the quickest way to understand these forms is to look at the pricing options 
Because in the end, it's what you pay for that is what you get. This is a fundamental rule. So firstly, we can discover that Amazon has this concept of regions. Worldwide, Amazon divides into regions. So you can have a European region, you can have a Pacific Asian region, and then you have US regions. So in this drop-down, we can see all the regions. So the EU region is based in Ireland, where we have two US regions. We have free Asia-Pacific and a South American region. We can look at the actual schema for what Amazon describes as a spot instance. A spot instance is an instance that you create in an elastic way. You spin it up and use it when you want it and shut down when you're finished. Now, they have divided here in their pricing what they describe as general purpose options for current generation, for previous generation. They're constantly evolving their types of virtual machines. So we have this idea of a medium-sized box, a large box, an extra large box across the different types of boxes. So you can have boxes that are optimized for memory, as in RAM. You can have boxes that are optimized for CPU. So you know the type of application you want to run, so you choose the box that's best for you. And the pricing is the best way to discover the different types of boxes. Amazon have a number of storage services. We will look at the storage service known as S3, where the S3 relates to the phrase simple storage service. And indeed, it is a simple service, but it's highly configurable and very useful. This is the actual web link that describes the service. Of particular interest to us is when they're talking about storage for data analysts, where we talked about data scientists and clustering. If you spin up a virtual cluster on Amazon, you can output the data that's map reduced from the cluster to the S3 service, where when we store data in the S3 service, we have this concept of buckets, and a bucket is just like a bag for storing data within. Amazon are pushing that for pharmaceutical data analysis, financial data analysis, all the different sorts of analysis that data scientists perform. They're pushing the S3 service as being a good backup for that sort of data. And indeed, it's extremely true, and this service is extremely popular. S3 is a very good service, and we will look at applications built around the S3 service. We will construct a simple interface to the S3 service to get a better understanding of how you can use it and how you can configure it. One thing that's important to mention, as well as for storage for data analysis, you can use S3 to host an extremely inexpensive but effective static website where you are using just static content. S3, in terms of data storage and accessing that data, works with a content delivery network known as CloudFront. So S3 couples tightly with Amazon's CloudFront content delivery network, or CDN. When we store our data in the S3 service, we access the S3 service through Amazon's in-house protocols. When we store the data in the S3 service, and then we configure that to work with the content delivery network, CloudFront, then we can access that data through other interfaces such as the web or other protocols that are web-related protocols. So we'll now look at how the CloudFront service works. And the CloudFront service, particularly for web applications, is extremely important and very interesting when you are a student learning about cloud services. If you are a beginning web application developer, then you will work with Content Delivery Network or CDN services to access things from dynamic web pages such as CSS files or JavaScript frameworks like jQuery or AngularJS in the sense that you will write a script that will link to a content delivery network that will download your JavaScript or your CSS files when your web page is loaded. You will also encounter it if you work with streaming services such as media streaming. If we look at Amazon's description of CloudFront, it's talking about using a network of edge locations. By this, it means it has a network topology. It has a number of node servers based around the world. And if your users are predominantly in Japan, then Amazon will pick that up and will move your data to its edge server in Japan, in the Pacific region, and then will download your content to the requests for that content from its node server 
in the Pacific region. You can think of these edges as being nodes in a server network topology and those nodes are based in the main regions and when your users come predominantly from any one region then Amazon will intelligently move your content to that node server and your content will be accessed from a server that's close to your user base and it's also important to mention again that when you have the data in S3 you access through the S3 protocol but when you have your data in CloudFront you access through the common web protocols so CloudFront is very good for configuring a REST service with your content in the S3 or an EC2 virtual machine so you have your content delivered inside the Amazon protocols inside AWS internally and then accessed by your users via the edge servers that make up the Amazon CloudFront service. Amazon CloudFront works firstly in the first instance with EC2 and S3. For the AWS database or data store we will look at Amazon's Dynamo DB. Dynamo DB is a NoSQL database similar to MongoDB or Cassandra. It allows two models for data storage. The document model where you can store a JSON structure as a document similar to MongoDB or Cassandra. Then the other model is the key value model. If you have ever worked with the application Redis, it is a fast key value data store and DynamoDB offers that particular model for data access. For clustering, we will look at Elastic Map Reduce. Elastic Map Reduce allows you to spin up a highly elastic Hadoop cluster for running MapReduce jobs. Elastic MapReduce is a great way to get into and learn about Hadoop programming and also to create virtual Hadoop clusters that are extremely cost effective. For a push-pull service, we will look at Amazon's simple notification service. If you are producing or creating a mobile application, you often want a push messaging service where you can push messages to all your attached mobile users. And Amazon offers such a service known as SNS or the Simple Network Service. Finally, we will look at how we can manage all our services by understanding and learning about the IAM console. The IAM console allows you, has a root user if you like, to create users and groups and create access management or authorization security keys for users to access services that you can restrict particular users to access particular services. So we will look at these core Amazon Cloud services in the follow-on modules for this course. What we will do is we'll learn about them in the first instance by using Amazon's software development kit to build simple introductory applications that show and highlight how you work with these systems in creating applications and you use the protocols that they are attached to to connect to them and to interconnect them within the AWS cloud service ecology. Let's move on now and see how we can set up and configure the Amazon Software Development Kit on our local box to access and create these Amazon services that we have just outlined.